Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. This has been swirling around and stewing for a little bit now. And I don't normally do this, but I want to apologize ahead of time in case I offend anybody. Because it wasn't me that put this together. I honestly have to say, I wouldn't say stuff like this. I wouldn't bring out things like this. That's just not in my character. But God has put something on my heart and put something together here. So we're going we're gonna to cover it. Amen. This month's series is taboo. So let's look into the word taboo a little bit. Before we get into the scripture, which is going to be in 1 John chapter 2, you can get ready there. But before we get into the scripture, let's look at the word taboo. In our Bible study a couple weeks back, we discussed what taboo is a social or religious custom prohibiting or forbidding discussion of a particular practice or forbidding association with a particular person, place, or thing. It says many taboos have been developed around physical exposure, what you can expose, what you can't expose, so on and so forth. Many tabu, ha, taboos have been uh, put out for the use of violence and must remain taboo in our society. There are many taboos that we, we have that some of them should and shouldn't be in place because God's word is the ultimate guide of what we should and shouldn't do. Taboo is synonymous with certain words. For instance, forbidden, prohibited, banned, prescribed, Vetoed, ruled out, interdicted, outlawed, not permitted, not allowed, illegal, illicit, unlawful, impermissible, and so on. There's many others in there. So we see that taboo is synonymous with all those. So let's discuss it a little bit. Taboo is synonymous with sin. Why do you say that, Pastor David? If God states something is sin, then for you it's taboo. If God states something is a sin, then for you it's taboo. In society, if something is taboo, it should be left alone, walked away from, and even shunned. Our society today in the United States has many taboos. Don't talk about the LGBTQ. Don't talk about abortion. In many households, in many families, in many people's lives, don't talk about politics. Okay? Don't talk about Black Lives Matter. Don't talk about the, the uh, border wall. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. It's not proper. You can't ta say that. You shouldn't say that. Well, it's a taboo. We as followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are too many considered to be taboo. Why? Because we say the name of Jesus. Why? Because we live a life that is above and beyond the rest. Why? Because there's a certain stigma and thing that says, because we love God, we are judging them. We don't even have to judge them. We can love them and open our arms and wrap our arms around them. But because we serve our Lord and Savior, we're judging them. And we're, therefore, we are taboo. The word of God or the Bible is also considered taboo. If you carry this in certain places, especially in our schools, or 
and other places, or you even start to open it up, you'll see people actually walk away and sometimes run because it's taboo to them. So don't go out in public preaching God's word and calling an apple an apple or an orange an orange or any hybrid fruit an edible fruit. Why? Because it's taboo. Don't do that. It's taboo to society. Okay? Do it anyway. <laughs> do it anyway. That's our calling. That's what we should do. If you desire another man or another woman sexually, you either are a fornicator or an adulterer, according to the Bible. So that desire is taboo. It's taboo. The Bible says so. The Scripture says so. The book of Exodus in chapter 20 says so. Okay? If you desire someone else's belongings in secret and without asking or their knowledge and you take it, you're a thief. It's taboo. <laughs> Jesus says in his word, don't do it. Don't steal. Don't, don't lust after and don't steal. Amen. If you hate and desire to shoot, stab, poison, drown, dissolve and kit by chemicals and stop the heart of any beating a uh, heart from beating in any human, any human. If you stop that heart and you desire to stop that heart, you're a murderer. Honestly, the Bible says if you just desire it, you're a murderer. If you were born with reproductive organs on the outside, you're predisposed to, at the age of 13, to have a deeper voice show up, facial hair show up, and later on in life, go bald. Guess what? You're a man. That's taboo, folks. That comment is taboo. If you were born with reproductive organs on the inside, and you were predisposed at the age of 13 to... Have your change a lot. Have your uh, uh, your first period, and your at the and uh, your skin is soft and it's fair. You have long flowing hair. You're able to give birth to a human. Guess what? You're a man. No, you're a woman. You're a woman. It's taboo, folks. No one is born having sexual genetics for one sex and a mental desire to be another. They're not born that way. Why? Because a child can't even think that much. All they're thinking about is eating, pooping, being held, being comforted, and being loved. That's all that child's thinking about. They're not predisposed to anything. That's all desire, folks. That's all desire. Nor are we born with a sexual desire for the same sex. My God is greater than that. It's taboo for me to speak like this. But it's still, the key word here is desire. The key word is desire. So let's look at that word desire. It's a strong feeling of wanting, i.e. lust. Let's look at the scripture. 1 John chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. In the translation I have written down here, which I believe is the NIV, it reads like this. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. You have overcome e the evil one. Do not love the world, nor anything in the world. 
If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. And the world doth pass away, and and the desire of it. And he who is doing the will of God, he doth remain to that to the age. The Message Bible says it like this, folks. You veterans, you veterans, a veteran is somebody that's been around, that knows what's going on. You veterans, okay, know the one who started it all. You know Jesus. And you newcomers, such vitality and strength. God's word is so steady in you. Your fellowship with God enables you to gain a victory over the evil one. Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love the world. Love of the world squeezes out love of the Father. Love of the world squeezes out love of the Father. If this was soaking wet right now, and I squeezed it, moisture would come out. If you love the world, it squeezes out that moisture or that love of the Father. So if you start to love the things of the world or love the people of the world or love anything in the world, the Bible says the love of the Father is not in you because it's it's squeezed out by the world. It's squeezed out by your flesh. It's squeezed out by your desire. If you read it in the, New, in the King James Version, it says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. So when we have that desire for something else other than God, and we live by that desire, we look after that desire, we lust after that des- you know, we, lo- we look after that, we are squeezing out God's love. We're squeezing out God's love because we can't control our own emotions. We can't control our own desires. We can't say no to ourselves and to our flesh and to what we want. We're squeezing out God's love. Why go through life desiring and lusting and, and, and wanting everything that you can have if it's going to take you away from God? Does that mean that we shouldn't love another person? We shouldn't get married? No. Let me give you a hint. If you meet somebody, especially in church, especially and only in church, in my opinion. If you meet somebody, your first attraction should be the love they have of God. It should be the love they have of God. It should be their prayer life. It should be their worship. It should be how much they love God. That should be your first attraction. Then when you get to know them, you fall in love with them, or you choose to love them. And my, you know, I choose to love somebody. I choose to love Pastor Shante. I choose to love each and every one of you. I choose to love Jesus. I choose not to love the enemy. These are choices I make. Love is not something you just fall into. The words fall into love or I fell in love do not compute in my mind. Why? Because I've realized through years and through experience and through teaching that love is not a magical thing that happens. It's a choice that we make. It's a choice that we make. Your first attraction should be 
to God. You're, and the first attraction to your spouse, to your future spouse, to your espoused, to anybody that you love should be their worship, should be their love of God. It shouldn't be, oh, she's cute. Man, would I like to get with her? Oh, my goodness. Look at that haba 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 man. Ooh, wow. I want him. It shouldn't be that. That's taboo, folks. It's taboo. God says it's taboo. We shouldn't desire them for anything other than their love of God. Anything other than who they are. Not, not for what they look like or how much you want to please yourself or whatever. I could go on and on and on and on and on about different things that we desire. But think about it. What desire that you have had other than the desire to, work, to serve God has led you to anything other than misery? I myself desire to have an awesome pickup truck. It tricked out in and out, inside and out, has the best ham radio equipment and antennas and everything on it. This is my desire. I desire to have certain things, and these are desires. But if I put them above God, if I put them before God, they're a sin. They're a sin. You can want something. It doesn't mean you have to have it, and it doesn't mean that it's a sin, but it does mean that you have to desire God first and don't worry about all that. If you desire somebody else's Bentley, <laughs> you're lusting after somebody else's stuff. I'm sorry. If you desire somebody else's woman, somebody else's man, you're already an adulterer. You're already a fornicator. Just by the thought of, man, I would like to have that person. It's taboo. We're talking taboo here. In our society today, we have many taboos. Just in society. A lot of them are based on the word of God. Some of them are based on, on group dynamics or what they call... Um, uh, I always use this word now. I can't remember it. <laughs> but it's based on the group think. The group, you know, we all think that we should go this way and not this way. Jesus says if you follow the crowd, he doesn't want to have anything to do with you. He says, come out and be ye separate from among them. Yes. Come out and be ye separate from among them. Be yourself separate. Don't follow the crowd. Don't go, go with what they say. Don't go with what they do. Don't follow the crowd. Let your desires, let your heart be towards God. Let your, let your mind think about godly things. When you have a problem, when you have a struggle because of desire, because most sin comes from desire. Every sin, if you look at it in one way or another, comes from desire. It comes from lust. If you want to do something other than go to church, other than praise God, other than pray, other than read the Bible, guess what? It's a desire. It's a lust. Doesn't mean you have to be so holy and perfect and, you know, read your Bible 24-7 and so on and so forth, but it does mean that you need to put your priorities in place and God should be number one in all things. So let your desires be towards him. Let your love be towards him. And don't let anybody or anything or, or any group of people or any church or any pastor or anybody take you away from God. 
Nobody should separate you from the love of God. Let no one, let not the enemy, let no one separate you from the love of God. Let not your father, let not your mother, let not your brother, let not your sister. Don't let your husband, don't let your wife, don't let that pretty girl down the street, don't let anybody separate you from the love of God. Let your desire be on Jesus. Let your desire be on him. Let your desire take you towards the glory and towards eternity. It says here in the scripture that we just read, that's what the ultimate goal is. To desire the Lord and to find your perfect eternity with Him. Let's stop right there. I'm done. We've discussed it. We know what desire is. We know what lust is. We know what taboo is. Let's all stand to our feet. I want you all to close your eyes. And I want you to open your hearts. I want you to open your minds. And I want you to talk to the Father and find out what desires, what things can if followed upon or if dwelt upon, can lead you astray and squeeze out his love. And right now, proclaim in your heart, proclaim in your mind, proclaim in your spirit, I will not follow that path. I will desire the word of God. I will desire the love of God. I will desire to serve him. Take a moment. Think about what is it that can lead you astray? What is it you need help over? And as we enter into prayer, as we enter into this time of consecration and dedication to the Lord, if you need to come up and you need to be prayed for for anything, if you need a pastor or somebody to lay hands on you and and pray for your strength and pray for your uh, po- pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to guide you and protect you and to get you to that place that God wants you to be. The altars are open. The altars are open. Please come. Hello. We want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.